Welcome everyone to Wednesday's edition of the MUTV group chat. Great to have you with us and with us as ever, Wes, Ben, Maisie and Danny. Morning chaps, how are you doing? Morning, morning. Man. All, good. All, good. All good. Listen Maisie, we're going to start actually with a challenge for you. I don't know if you've seen this on Instagram, um, people are doing the, the, the so-called 5k challenge and, oh, and the British oh, yeah, swimmer. Yeah. You've seen Jazz Carlin, the British swimmer, has challenged you. And God. what you've got to do is, you, in your one hour of exercise, you've got to use it to either run, uh, walk, or cycle 5K. And you've got to donate a fiver to the, uh, the Run for Heroes um, Just Giving page, which is raising money for NHS staff. And then you nominate five other people to do that. So first of all, are you going to accept the challenge? And are you going to do it today? Did you say I've got to run 5K? Well, you could walk. Or cycle, but I think, run, I, think you should, I think you should say you're going to run the 5k. I'll cycle it. I can't run. Me, I'm an eggs are gone. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll certainly cycle it. I've been doing that anyway. Right, okay. Oh. Somehow, yeah. I don't know how you're going to do it, but we could do some video evidence of this so we can show it on the show tomorrow. But you're going to All do right. it? Yeah, of course, we will. 100%. Okay. 100%. Uh, who are you going to nominate? But have you got five hours you're going to nominate just out of interest? I'll, I'll, I'll do tiny there. I'll do tiny. <laughs> I'll do. I'll, I'll do the I'll do the five lap four lads there and you Stuart I tell you what, you get out <laughs> I'll do it mate every day I'm out I'm up for hey. that of course so yeah. five lads in view I'll yeah walk. yeah there you go I nominate you lot right okay excellent so we want to see a bit of evidence of that tomorrow on the tomorrow show are we well. are we all going to do our show today and then we can show them all tomorrow or what we're we going to do that's a good question actually I'll speak to our extensive production staff about oh, yeah. that. Oh, and decide yeah. how we're going to do it. Um, but yeah, we're all doing it. You'll nominate us. So, uh, but Jazz Carlin nominated you, mate. Which Cheers, is, Jazz. Know, yeah, that was nice of her, that, wasn't it? Weird. Um, also, let's just have a look at the uh, the YouTube comments from yesterday's show. Um, Wes does feature prominently um, in this. It won't surprise you to know. But here's a couple of them. This one from, from Try, who says, True legends indeed. Thank you for bringing light in these times. Uh, keep it up, guys. This one from Osman, MUTV group chat, better than Sky Sports, MUFC for real. Thanks for that, mate. Now, this one about Wes, Sanjo, who said, did Wes just say Fernando Brunes? Yeah, he did, pal. He did. <laughs> and also, <laughs> artificial intelligence said, Fernando Brunes, Wes, you gem. Now, if you have no idea what we're talking about, this is what Wes had to say about our Portuguese Magnifico in yesterday's show. I'm really looking forward to it now. He's got a new challenge um, with Fernando Brunes coming in and we've, we're all looking forward to see what that sort of partnership brings. So there you go. It was funny. Wes did say it. Have you, have you, you're not going to live that down, are you, Wes? No, but I'm, what I'll do this week, just to recover, I'll start doing it, everyone's name the other way around. And then it, <laughs> do you know, like it was, I was joking. <laughs> Ten bombs. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> it, it, actually, the point you were making, though, about the Pogba and... Um, Bruno uh, playing together. Um, Bruno Fernandez, the second part of his, his Q and A is actually on the um, Manchester United app later this evening, and he does talk about how excited he is to to, to play with Paul Pogba when eventually we start again and Pogba will be fit. So I think Wes and, and, and guys, uh, we touched on it yesterday, but that is something to relish, isn't it? Yeah, for me, it's, it's just about competition, Stu. I think uh, a lot of our good years is when we had quality all over in the squad. And everyone was fighting for, for, for places um, and bringing the best out of each other. Yeah. But yeah. Those, those two in particular are amazing. I mean, they've, got, they've just got that bit of, bit of X factor in that midfield area. It's funny, Sean, I was talking to my mate yesterday about this, and you've got different permutations. If you're going to play the three at the back with Luke Shaw and then two wing backs, uh, you could play Matic in there, play Pogba in there, Scott McTominay, Fred. Bruno, and as Wes just said there, he's just hit the nail on the head. It's having that competitiveness and also the ability to um, change the dynamics of the team if you need to. If you play three at the back or four at the back, I think it's just a really good, healthy thing. And, you know, if you look back at the history of United, having a really good squad is a massive part of, of being successful. Yeah, Ben and Dan, I mean, that, that would have, if, if everyone is fit, then suddenly the manager's got unbelievable options there in that midfield area. Yeah, and I think you've got to have a strong bench. Um, I think over the past four, four or five years, we've sometimes looked at how we can change a game from the bench. 
Um, but now, obviously, it's all starting to come together. Um, you do need that competition. You, you only have to look at going back to just before Christmas time when Scott McTominay was out and we were struggling in the middle of the park. We buy Bruno. Um, Scott comes back and Scott's fighting to get back in because he knows that the lads who have been in have been performing. Matic was out in the cold, came in and performed. So that level of competition, you know, you know in the back of your mind that if I, when I get in, I've got to perform. Um, and it's a, it's a healthy competition that's definitely needed if you want to achieve. Yeah, Ben? Yeah, the, the, the quality's got to be uh, right throughout the squad and it's great for the manager that... Um, He's got a dilemma, but it's a good dilemma to have. And I think that, you know, when the fans see, as Daniel just pointed out there, that you've got strength coming off the bench as well. Um, the healthy, healthy competition for places is something that, um, that Manchester United have always had. Uh, and it helps to bring the best out in each other. And it's great for the manager that if one person's injured or suspended, then he knows that he's got someone of quality to come in and, uh, and, and fill that role. Yeah, something to look forward to when eventually we do restart. Well, I'll tell you what, that's why don't we just get another treble winner on the show? We may as well, didn't we? Let's cross the Norway and let's chat to Ronnie Johnson, who's been waiting to, to speak to us. Morning, Ronnie. How are you doing, mate? How are you? Nice to see you. Morning, Ronnie. Ron. Hi, Ron. Listen, mate, what's the situation over there? We're obviously going slightly mad here on, on, on lockdown. Is it the same over there? Yeah, it's the same as, I think we've been on the fifth week now, uh, on, like lockdown. Um, everything, you know, uh, happened really quick. Uh, so, quite boring. Kids are home, doing uh, everything at home. You can't do any football. But they're opening it up, up now. It's uh, a little bit. Uh, next week, I think the kindergartens are opening up. And also schools uh, kids in schools for up till 12 i think next week so they're starting up a little bit uh easy and see how it goes and um i think it goes from there uh, football wise it's uh we can we can uh, they're opening uh, opening up for training in a small group like uh, uh five people in a group small group have to stay two meters apart can't touch the ball with the hands can't head it uh I have to watch the ball after every training. So it's uh, it's different times, yeah. It is, absolutely. Are you missing football? We're obviously talking about it a lot, but we're missing it. We haven't played for about a month now. I don't know how when we're going to be able to play again, but are you missing it? Oh, yeah. I think uh, same here. You know, uh, everybody's uh, football mad uh, here as well. Uh, missing, you know, Premier League. Hopefully it's coming back, uh, back as soon as possible. Uh, so it's the same situation here. You know, it's... Uh, it's uh, people are uh, very hungry for for some sport in in general, I think. And, uh, and yeah, where does um, does a week go by normally when someone doesn't mention to you United or the treble or your success? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, well, it can take you know, but uh, as I said, back here in Norway, uh, Premier League are are really big, uh, especially. You know, the big teams, uh, United, you got Liverpool, uh, which are the two biggest teams here in Norway. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, the interest for, for football here is, is uh, as you know, it's, 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 it's big. So. But yeah, it can, it can take uh, a little bit. But uh, I'm back into football now again, so I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, well, tell us what, tell us, tell us what you're up to. No, I'm back in, you know, I've been coaching for uh, like a sports clinic for like 10 years, but now I'm back in, you know, I have my own team here. So it's a little bit different than uh, developing players. It's now, it's more like the team, the whole team. So, but it was uh, interrupted here as well. So <laughs> it's everything is on standstill. Yeah. I think m most importantly, Ronnie, what was it like playing with David May and Wes Brown? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it was really great. I, I, I tell you, it's uh, first of all they were really good footballers and uh, and uh, and really nice lads. So, and I said to to, to both of them, for, for example, uh, David May was uh, so important for the whole team, uh, as everybody can tell, because you need uh, somebody team uh, who's also is uh, is loosening up the the tension a bit, which is uh, you can know he, he will. <laughs> and Wes, he was a, you know he was a young guy coming in, and he was so. He was so uh, so talented and so good. So it's everything was uh, was brilliant to play with. Because you seem to me a relatively level-headed guy, sensible guy. So <clears throat> must have been strange playing with Maisie. 
<laughs> no, it was, it was, to be honest, he was the best talker of the game. He was so easy to play with. So um, there you go. I, I always have a good laugh with uh, with Messi, as you probably you all have. Yeah, I mean, when when Ronnie came on, Maisie, he called him the Ice Man. Obviously, that's what they call Victor Lindelof these days. But the original Ice Man is amazing. Uh, one of a brilliant, brilliant. I, I, I'd say I've, I've mentioned it to Ronnie. Best centre half I played with, and he could also play in midfield whenever he need to, needed to, and he could step in there. Um, never ever got done for pace. Great in the air. Great reader of the game, and. Um, just a, just a, an old all round great lad. Enjoyed the beer. Enjoyed the, enjoyed the dressing room. Um, I think you know with any Norwegian or Scandinavians that come over, um, they, they do have the same mentality as as us Brits, and um, you know they, they fit in so easy. And, and Ronnie certainly did that, along with Henning and, and obviously the manager now, Ollie. That's that's quite something to say, though. Best you played with. I mean, let's be honest, he played with some pretty yeah, decent ones. Yeah, I think we just had an understanding that um, we knew, we just knew each other's game, and um, you know whenever we played, and, and as you say, you know I played with Yat, a couple of games with Rio, played with Wes, but uh, Pally, Brucey, but um, you know the Iceman's up there. He is. I understand what you're saying, Mazer. I've said it to Annie as well. Uh, he was one of them that just got on with everything, completely finished. I always used to say to my mates. Ronnie Johnson, lads, mate. Oh, unbelievable. When I used to watch him in training or joining. Um, and I was obviously, I was lucky because I got to watch most of him and train with most of him as well. But Ronnie, the ice man, was definitely up there. And he still you, puts the ice on to this day, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you'd, think, you'd, you'd, actually think, Stu, you'd actually think after every training session he's been through a car crash or something like that. Because he'd have packs of his shoulders, back of his head, ankles, knees, hips, groins. Unbelievable. No, no, there's no ice in the club. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Yeah, I mean Ben and, and Danny, I mean good <clears throat> memories of, of watching Ronnie because um, that's quite a, a test, a, a testimonial, if you like, from uh, from Maisie. From my point, yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, a bit younger than Wes, but he used to watch Ronnie in the first team, doing his doing his thing all the time, and. Never let anybody down. Was always always at the top of the top of his game. And I think you, when you're a younger player and you're looking up at the first teams, you look at the people's habits. And Ronnie's habits were always good. His professionalism was top. And then I've had the the fortune of playing with him <clears throat> later on now in um, some of the some of the legends games where I just enjoy watching watching him on the bus doing his even as we're going on the way today. He does his eccentric drops, looking after his Achilles. <laughs> 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 On the coach, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the airport, that. Eh? <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, you, oh, know, you see Ben in the Legends games, he's still got it. Oh, without <laughs> any question. Yeah, I mean, I, I was fortunate enough to, to, to play a couple of games with Ronnie and certainly to train with him for a number of, year, a number of years along with Ollie. And, um, and I couldn't believe that United had signed such a player for, for such a nominal fee or two players for such a nominal fee. And uh, he went on to have a great career. <clears throat> um, similar to what, what Daniel was saying about Yap Stam, you, you know, you, you wonder as a forward how you're ever going to get past somebody like that with his, uh, with his strength and his pace and his reading of the game. Um, and over and above that, and especially what Maisie says, that he, uh, he fitted in so well. It does help that when you know, most Scandinavians come over, they know the lingo, they fit in straight away. Um, and I've had the pleasure of, uh, of Ronnie's company on many, many an occasion since you know we both finished playing, and he's a, he's an all-round top guy. How do you look back on it overall, right? Obviously, your first three seasons, you didn't really have many injuries. The last two or three, you did have quite a few injuries. Do you look back now and think that was a bit frustrating, or did you only look back with a smile at your your time at Old Trafford? <laughs> No, to be honest, I, I as I said, I, I really enjoyed my game and all the all the people that was there when I I was there. So looking back on and all the trophies uh, that we won, it's it's uh, it was a tr tremendous time, you know. Uh, but you know, you can also you know take from you know all the injuries I had at the end of my career. You can always uh, <laughs> I was laughing so much I have to take my take my um, <laughs> but uh, but. Uh, 
um, you know, looking back on the injury, you always feel that you can have done something different or, or, or something in, in, in your preparation. And that's, you know, something I try to, to learn the kids uh, now these days that uh, preparation and you can always prepare for, for, for things, but some injuries you can't prepare for. But, uh, but uh, uh, also that you have to come back uh, stronger uh, after an injury. But, but looking back on my whole career at United was uh, just a fairy tale, I have to say. It was uh, yeah. I played with these guys, so I was, I was lucky. Yeah. I'd just like to, to get your opinion, um, Ronnie, on, on United's current situation at, at centre-back. Obviously, Harry Maguire has come in and played every game. He's the captain. He's had a big impact. Victor, who you will know, has, has played virtually every game alongside him. Eric Bailly is now fit again. Young Axel. And there's still, obviously, Jones and Spoil Smallings out on loan. How, how well do you think United has stopped at centre-back? And what do you think of Maguire and, and Lindelof as a partnership? Yeah, to be honest, I uh, always looked, you know, well, I started off as a centre forward, but I ended up as a centre back. But uh, looking back on that, it's, it's so important that you have the base and the, and the foundation in the, in the team. So, and it seems like it calms down the team as well, that you know that you're defensively strong and, and, uh, and uh, it works and, and you trust each other. And, uh, and I think also every game they play together now, it will, it will, they will benefit of, you know, they get to know each other even better. So that's, everybody here, they will say the same, you know, it's uh, as a centre-back uh, or as a defensive player, it's so important that you know each other, as Macy tell, uh, said before, they, we know each other's strengths and, and weaknesses. So so when you do that, it, it, it will progress to, to another, another level, which it's looking back on now, in the game, last games we see with United, I think it looks really well. Yeah, I mean, we, I think... We have that. Ele- we're on that eleven-game unbeaten run, and nine of those eleven, I think, have been clean sheets. So it does look as though things are, are, are really solidified. Ron at the at the back for United, obviously with, with Maguire very much at the heart of it. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's come into the, to the team and and uh, took the team. Also, I think he's a, he's a, he's a captain. So everything seems to 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 calm down and and. Uh, and it was a very good signing for for United. Uh, I was a little bit unsure of him in the beginning when he came from uh, Leicester, but now it's, it seems like you know he also seems like he uh, personally he lifts his game also with, with better players as well around him. So, and that's part of it as well. I mean, you get to play with better play, players every day, uh, and you go out there and you have the confidence to meet the best players in in the league. So. And you get to know each other, so that's it builds on everything. So it looks really good, I have to say. Guys, before we go, we just mentioned must mention the, the match rewind vote on the Manchester United app. The latest one is called Goals Galore. Four games to choose from. Um, the game that gets the most votes you'll see in full MU TV on the app. Here are the four to choose from. It goes back to April 2000. Middlesbrough three, United four. United trailing one 0 at half time. I think Skull scored a great goal in that game. This one you remember where's April 2003, United 4, Real Madrid 3, when the original Ronaldo scored a hat-trick. Beckham came on and scored twice. United went out 6-5 on aggregate, an extraordinary game. In 2007, United 7, Roma 1, that extraordinary night when United were training from the first leg and I think they were I think four up after about 20 minutes and, and were fantastic, 7-1. And the final one, Boxing Day 2012, United 4, Newcastle 3, United were behind three times and won it 4-3, Chicharito in stoppage time. You've got until Thursday at 4 p.m. to vote on the app. Guys, what are you going to go for there? Maisie, which one of those four you want to see in full? Uh, so much as we lost the game, I'll go Ronaldo. Hmm. The Atric, that game. I yeah. mean, I've, I've never seen a, a Manchester United um, atmosphere and um, the fans applaud a player off after yeah. match against them. Um, I've not seen that game for a long, long time. Um, yeah, Roma was a great result. Um, and the other two, yeah. But I'd just like to see r- one last you know, rerun of that because I thought Ronaldo that night was absolutely unplayable. Yeah, where you saw him close up, were he unplayable? Yeah, well, I, I, I want to see the Roma one as well, but I'll go with, with the same game for the simple fact. I'll, I'll watch it to see if we can get any closest to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I mean, that was that was a game and a half. That's one of my favourites. Um, obviously, Beck's coming off the bench and, and producing as well. But honestly, that game, like Maisie said, it went as soon as, as soon as he got his hat trick, it went silent for like I don't know two seconds, and everyone just applauded him. Uh, you know, sort of clapped as well. And when he come off, everyone stood up and gave him a clap. I mean, I've never seen that at Old Trafford um, against an opponent, to be fair. But and that was sort of later on as well. I think when he, you know, he kept getting a lot of injuries. But I yeah. think he just decided for this game he's going to turn up and show everyone what he's about. And that's why he was so special. I think. Ben, um, I. I, I was at that game, it was fantastic, as the Roma one, but I'm going to go down the different route because I was commentating on the game on the day and I'm going to go for the United-Newcastle 4-3. It was an incredible game and, like you said, to come from behind three times was uh, it, it, it was heart in your mouth stuff and, you know, typical United, they go and do it in, in the last minute. I mean, all those games you mentioned are brilliant. Just very quickly, it, before Ronaldo, who was the last player to score a hat-trick at Old Trafford? Was it Dennis Bailey? Dennis Bailey, New Year's Day for QPR. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. 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 Danny, what are you going to vote for? He was my idol growing up, R9. Ronaldo. What, Dennis Bailey? Yeah, Dennis Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> no, R9, he was like, I used to do everything like him, apart from when he did that little trim and he went a bit too far. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I loved him. I, I used to stand and watch the games. When I was when I was a youngster, obviously the first team would go out. I used to stand and watch the games from the tunnel. I used to want to watch the players like feel what it's like running out the tunnel, and you know, especially when the foreign teams would come, like Real Madrid and so on. I'd stand there and I remember watching the, the, the team come out, and I just remember thinking, "Wow, he's he's unbelievable." And then I watched it from the hat trick from there, and his first goal where he where he did Rio for pace, it, it was coming towards the tunnel as well. And I just remember thinking, flipping it, like if you if you want to get anywhere near that, you've got some way to go. You know what what a player, um, and just to do it against that United team that was was un, un, unbelievable. So yeah, and like like Wes and Major said, to get a standing all at Old Trafford and you're not in a red shirt is something massive. So yeah, that one for me. Yeah, finally, Ronnie, if you had to vote for one of those games, what would you go for? Yeah, well, I have to go for the same. I think, uh, you know, uh, watching Ronaldo and also playing against him is, uh, was a tremendous uh, footballer and uh, just a joy to watch. Uh, so I would go for that game as well. Ronnie, it's been great of you to join us today. It's been great to see you, mate. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah, uh, thank you, guys. It's been lovely to be here. Thank you. Cheers, Ronnie. I must just say, nice, guys, tomorrow, nice tomorrow on the show, tomorrow, uh, our old friend Dion Dublin is going to join us and Maisie, Jazz Carlin is coming on to make sure that she's happy with your challenge. So, that's, that's okay. Yeah. Hey, listen, you've got to get out of your backside and do it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's a, that's, 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 Maisie, yeah. Maisie Stewart will do it in his chair. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll be doing that tomorrow. Um, thanks to Ronnie, thanks to the guys. Uh, make sure you join us for Thursday's show. See you then.